now. Welcome to News Watch 12 at 6. I'm Justin Betty. We'll get to those stories in just a minute. But first, it's been a busy evening in the weather department with thunderstorms and hail. News Watch 12 Chief Meteorologist Jeff Weller has been tracking all of it for us from the Weather Center. Jeff, how's it looking out there? Hey, Justin, the atmosphere is all stirred up right now, but these are all beginning to come in line and behave themselves because the severe thunderstorm warnings have all been dropped across the area now. However, this storm right there moving through central Lincoln County uh, is producing near 50 mile per hour wind gusts and some small hail with that one. The rest of these though are just basically lots of lightning, lots of heavy rain, and that's been a thing all afternoon as they're moving incredibly slow, 15 to 25 miles per hour. That's not normal for thunderstorms, uh, and they're dropping very heavy rainfall across the area now, but the back edge is moving through. Uh, the atmosphere will recover tonight and tomorrow. We have lots of sunshine back in the forecast, but for now, here we go. Here's central Lincoln County, Rock Falls is right there, Gleason, Tomahawk, it's through Tomahawk now, pushing southeast about 25 miles per hour. There has been some hail in these as well. We've had reports of golf ball size hail today, many, many thousands of reports of uh, penny size hail, uh, but you can see here a little one right there near Gleason. We could see some golf ball size hail there as it kind of rains itself out and they deflate in the atmosphere this evening. But here again is the big picture. It's improving out there as we speak. Those details are coming up. Justin. All right, thanks, Jeff. As summer visitors return to the Northwoods this weekend, so did vendors with the hope of a better year at the flea markets ahead. News Watch Charles Rachel Eiler headed to St. Germain for their opening day. It gives us a closer look. In 2020, under the pavilion, flea markets were a bit quieter. A year later, cars line bumper to bumper with visitors packed shoulder to shoulder. Obviously, with Corona, there was a lot uh, less people, a lot less vendors, you know. Um, not the crowd we have today. And this year is definitely looking different with more people coming from across the nation to the St. Germain Flea Market. Look behind me, we have cars from North Dakota, Michigan, a little further down, Illinois, and even as far south as Arizona. People are all coming for a new sense of normalcy. It's overwhelmingly, there's double the crowd here today than any time last year. Mick Fenn comes 900 miles from Oklahoma, splitting his time between the two states. He says the crowd's return doesn't surprise him. Everything we've done this weekend has been packed full. The, the craft show in Eagle River was, I think, probably exceeded expectations and, and uh, everything going on. I think people are just ready to get out and, and get back to normal. And just like Northwoods visitors, locals say there's a new sense of hope heading into the season. I'm very happy about it. This is what keeps our little town going. We don't have to wear a mask. It's great. Yeah. It's great to see all the people out again. And even better for the market's vendors. Jared Norgel and Emily Kern return for their second year at the market, this time seeing much better turnout. Last year was kind of iffy for us. We weren't sure how many people would show up because of COVID. And this year definitely has been different so far. We've had a lot of visitors and sold a lot, so that's been really great. Manager of the flea market, Renee Kecker, only expects that success to continue throughout the season. Our fire department uh, hugely relies on this. I hope that every Monday is like this or better because this is amazing. Reporting in St. Germain, Rachel Eiler, Newswatch 12. Well, it's a holiday, so take this with a grain of salt, but the Wisconsin Department of Health Services has now reported two straight days with less than 100 new COVID-19 cases across the entire state. Today, DHS reports 82 new cases. That drops your seven-day rolling average to 225. Hasn't been that low for more than a year since last April. DHS also reports no new deaths today. We're averaging three deaths per day statewide over the last week. Nearly 48% of all people in Wisconsin have now received at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine, according to the latest numbers from DHS. Now that varies a lot by county. Dane County has the highest vaccination rate in the state at over 66% with at least one shot. Clark and Taylor County are each under 27%. Today again is Memorial Day and across the region, in addition to all the cookouts, Americans took some time to remember those who lost their lives serving our country. The United County Veterans Council held a Memorial Day ceremony at the Rhinelander High School, accompanied by Rhinelander High School Band, show choir, and a number of speakers. Many events like this were canceled last year, but they were fairly crowded this time around. What really hits home, they read off, I believe, about 219 names today. And a lot of those people I knew. And so, unfortunately, we weren't able to mention them last year because there was no ceremony because of COVID. 
Those are veterans who have passed on since the last time they held this ceremony. Honor Guard members in attendance say they hope this reminds folks not to forget our freedom and where it comes from. The members that have fallen and that still serve today should be honored, and that's why I come. I feel it's patriotic. We need to do this, and we need to pass this legacy on to our children and other generations. Ceremonies were held, of course, across the Northwoods this weekend as millions across the country paid their respects to remember the men and women who fought and died for our country. Today, millions of people again across the nation are remembering lives lost in combat. However, a couple of lawmakers are leading a bipartisan push specifically to memorialize those lost during the war on terror. We'll show you how in just a few minutes. But first, Jeff's in with your full forecast. That's next on Newswatch 12 at 6. This portion of News Watch 12 is brought to you by Northwoods Furniture, Eagle River. Rescan now to get NBC plus four sub channels. It's Champion Septic's Customer Appreciation Giveaway. Have your septic or holding tank pump between now and November 12th to be entered to win one of five big prizes. Drawing November 14th at Cabaret Cove in Rhinelander. Champion Septic, your septic system specialists. Real Estate Auction, June 6, Cranon, Wisconsin. Beautiful ranch home being sold to the highest bidder. Contact Brass and St. Louis Auctions for more details. Carpet City. Come to Carpet City Flooring Center and get the toughest waterproof floors in the industry where they're in stock and on sale. Rigid Maximum XL is 50% thicker and 30% longer, resulting in maximum durability, which is perfect for active families and pets. Not to mention, it's easy to install. Come to Carpet City Flooring Center to get your Rigid Maximum XL waterproof floors today. Carpet City. Our prices will flow. Chevy is America's fastest growing full line brand and people are taking it everywhere. Taking Trailblazer outdoors, confidently taking on new places with Equinox and taking on more with Silverado. Whatever you do, there's a perfect Chevy to take you anywhere. Find your perfect Chevy and get up to 18% of MSRP cash back on select 2021 Chevy SUV models or get a $4,000 cash allowance on all 2021 Silverado 1500 True Cab pickups. Let's go! Yeah. Uh, seat belts? Nah, don't worry about it. Yeah. All right. Those dudes are going nowhere fast. <laughs> Double driver! Buckle up, fellas. If you don't, it can cost you money or worse. Got that. I told you. You were right. Click it or kick it. Together, we can save lives. Farming today doesn't always feel the same way it used to. Then again, some of it feels all the same. Maybe it isn't so much the jobs that changed, but how they get done. Now that's a different story. Everything got bigger and smaller at the same time. Insurance, accounting, and taxes can get complicated. So you need an expert who's looking to keep every dollar possible in your pocket. Ag Country, experts in every field. The good news is this is beginning to wind down outside now. It's been quite an eventful afternoon. Uh, dozens and dozens, almost hundreds of reports now of hail and some strong wind gusts in there as well. But going in close, you can see exactly where the heaviest weather is now. And the trick is to keep this storm right there under severe limits. If we can do it, we're probably in pretty good shape now. It's moving through central parts of Lincoln County as we speak with some uh, gusty winds and probably some hail in there as well. And it's been that way all afternoon. These are really good hail makers out there across the area today as they're reaching far up into the atmosphere, tapping into those cold temperatures and updrafts, and they're still going. You can see the lightning data on here. You can see the lightning data. That means there's updrafts in the thunderstorm, thus they're still kind of regenerating themselves, but it's still, it's not as prolific as it was just an hour ago. So they are beginning to wind down across the area. Now, going further south, you see how this is kind of bowing out right here. You got to kind of gust a, a push, a surge south and east. Uh, we got to watch that one. This, is, this one could go severe at any time and it has a history of hail with that and gusty winds as it moves toward the Merrill Arrow area and Anago again. Uh, Anago has had three rounds now of a, uh, potentially or almost severe weather across the area with wind gusts near 50 miles per hour.
shower and small pea-sized hail just a couple hours ago. Speaking of hail, here's a hail tracker, and again, it doesn't look like much, but as these storms go up, they're pulsing in the atmosphere, and then they get too heavy, so they kind of release all their hail in one spot, and every little dot you see there is when a storm does that, it loses its updraft, it releases all of its hail, and you can quickly get a quarter-sized hail. Uh, we've seen reports of half-dollar size hail today. So again, they're spotty in here, but lots of reports of P to half dollar size hail today. And here's that one storm surging across Lincoln County. And there's a hail core just to the east of Highway 51 right there about to cross Highway 17 just south in the west area of Gleason uh, moving into Merrill. So Merrill uh, could see some penny to dime to even probably quarter size hail in the next 15 minutes. Here's the velocity mode. It's the radar kind of spinning, looking at the wind in the atmosphere. And when you get the reds and the greens together, that could be indicative of a tornado, and that's not doing that anywhere in here. No tornadoes out there at all today. These are really good wind makers and hail makers. Uh, there's no spin in the atmosphere, though. So again, here's the big picture, and the lightning data is coming down just a bit, turning into heavy rain makers. They're moving incredibly slow. There's just no steering currents in the atmosphere to kind of move these things. So here they are drifting south and east at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. So if you get under one tonight, you could see that gusty wind, small hail again. Uh, but overall, it is kind of winding down as some drier air moves in. And then we're going to crank up the heat. Just wait till you see the seven-day forecast. But it's all the cause of this little low. See it right there? Uh, there's not much to it, but it's doing just enough in the atmosphere to kind of stir everything up. And that's happening out there right now. High pressure is going to build in for us tomorrow. Partly cloudy skies tomorrow. And there's that rain cool there across the Northwoods right now. 57 in Arbor Vida. Meanwhile, it's 75 in Wausau. That's the atmosphere trying to correct itself. Uh, you get that huge difference in temperature and usually the cooler temperatures win except this time it's not we have warmer temperatures in the forecast in fact look at this 75 tomorrow 74 on Wednesday 78 Thursday and then whoo, we're back in the 80s Friday Saturday Sunday Monday and incredibly humid temperatures are on the way for the coming weekend and this is the map beyond this week it gives us a really good chance of staying really warm across the Great Lakes and the Northeast uh, that could firmly plant us in the 80s uh, through the middle portions of June. And it's also going to kick up the allergies. So right now, tree pollen is off the charts in the high category. Grass pollen, though, now in the moderate category. So if we all stop mowing our lawns, maybe that'll go away. Your forecast then for tonight, then, is uh, storms ending out there now. Dense fog is likely late, especially where it did rain today, with low temperatures down near 45. For tomorrow, lots of clouds in the morning, followed by partly cloudy skies in the afternoon. Highs back near 75. And then looking ahead, your seven-day forecast by Northwest Furniture Metro's Keep us dry after today, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We crank up the heat Friday back in the mid 80s for next weekend. Justin? And look at that forecast. Thanks, Jeff. You've heard by now how now more than six months after the presidential election, Arizona Republicans continue their audit into the election results there. Last week, Assembly Speaker here in Wisconsin, Robin Voss, says he has hired three retired police investigators to look into our state's results. During an interview Thursday on Conservative Talk Radio, Voss confirmed one of those he hired is retired Milwaukee police detective Mike Sandvik. He previously led a probe into voter fraud in Milwaukee. Voss told the Associated Press without naming him that he's been active in the Republican Party. The nation caught, uh, pauses today to remember the service men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice. Meanwhile, with the 20th anniversary of the September 11th terror attacks approaching, there is a call for a memorial to honor those killed in the global war on terror. Karen Kafa talks to two U.S. House members leading this push for a place on the National Mall. To give you a point of reference here at the memorial, uh, next to me on the left is Arlington National Cemetery, where a number of family and friends of the fallen who maybe couldn't visit last year due to COVID-19 restrictions are able to return this year to pay respects and reflect on the contributions of their loved ones, especially in Section 60, where service members who made the ultimate sacrifice in Iraq and Afghanistan are laid to rest. Flags placed on more than 260,000 headstones at Arlington National Cemetery for Memorial Day weekend, known as Flags In. It's our duty to, to honor the people who served. Arlington Section 60, a reminder that some conflicts are not quite yet history. If you want a sense um, 
the emotions in our community from 20 years of war. Go there on Memorial Day and see what's on the faces of the family and friends of the fallen. It's where service members killed in Afghanistan and Iraq are laid to rest and the living come to reflect. But nearly 20 years after the September 11, 2001 terror attacks prompted the global war on terror, there is a push for a memorial on the National Mall. I think we've seen decade after decade the importance of veterans and their families, those who lost, lost loved ones in that war, the ability to come to a place uh, and to bring their kids and their grandkids to that place and reflect on the meaning of that experience. Congressman Jason Crow, a Colorado Democrat, and fellow House member Mike Gallagher, a Wisconsin Republican, are veterans. Their part of the broader memorial effort is a bill that seeks Congress's authorization for a national mall location. They've taken colleagues on runs like this one to show proposed sites. I think a memorial like this and all the memorials on the lawn not only you know provide that place that Jason talked about for veterans, but I would like to think serve as a reminder for all Americans about you know, how lucky we are to be Americans, but the cost that a lot of people pay in order to keep us safe and keep us free as a country. Crow and Gallagher's bill has the backing of more than 140 bipartisan members seeking to give these heroes and those they left behind that sense of place. It's Karen Kather reporting. You can call it a good luck or bad luck, but a few out-of-town deputies in Wisconsin got an unexpected surprise recently. What should have been a, just a regular break turned into a rather funny series of videos. We'll break it down after the break. Where are you going to go to get your car put back to new? Precision Body and Frame. Handled. Air. Conditioned. Lawn. Mowed. Get started on your next home project at Angie.com or download the Angie mobile app today. Make your home an Angie home. Angie and done. Antibacterial or moisturizing body wash? Definitely moisturizer. Antibacterial. Can I have both? New Dove Care and Protect Body Wash eliminates 99% of bacteria and moisturizes for hours. Two for one. Can I keep it? New Dove Care and Protect. Zero compromise. I've made progress with my mental health. So when I started having unintentional body movements called tardive dyskinesia, I ignored them. But when the movements in my hands and feet started throwing me off at work, I finally had to say, it's not okay. It was time to talk to my doctor about Austedo. She said that Austedo helps reduce TD movements in adults, while I continue with most of my mental health medications. Austedo can cause depression, suicidal thoughts, or actions in patients with Huntington's disease. Pay close attention to and call your doctor if you become depressed, have sudden changes in mood, behaviors, feelings, or have suicidal thoughts. Common side effects include inflammation of the nose and throat, insomnia, and sleepiness. Don't take Ostedo if you have liver problems, are taking Respirin, Tetrabenazine, or Valbenazine. Ostedo may cause a regular or fast heartbeat, restlessness, movements mimicking Parkinson's disease, fever, stiff muscles, problems thinking, and sweating. Talk to your doctor about Ostedo. It's time to treat TD. TD is not okay. Visit askforostedo.com. Step one, build a new breed, make it an SUV. Send it off-road, send it to Baja. Then evolve, enhance, expand, make it capable, smart, human. And then make more. Because the only way to predict the future is to build it. And the only way to build it is Ford Proud. See your Ford dealer to build and pre-order a select SUV, like the new Bronco Sport, and get an additional $500 bonus certificate on top of all offers. Where are you going to go to get your car put back to new? Precision body and frame. The quality's in our name. Collision, decision, precision. This portion of Newswatch 12 is brought to you by Ag Country Farm Credit Services. Police say a drunk man broke into a Milwaukee home recently. What he didn't know is that the Airbnb was filled with out-of-town sheriff's deputies in the city for training. They recorded the encounter on the social media app TikTok. Hillary Mintz has the story. Training. It doesn't get much more unlucky than this. Well, apparently a drunk dude crashed with us last night. A drunk teen broke into a home where three out-of-town sheriff's deputies were staying. They recorded it on TikTok. About 2.30 in the morning, I heard some crashing around upstairs, and I thought it was this guy going to the bathroom. It wasn't me. The Montana officers are in Milwaukee for emergency vehicle training, but never expected a crime to happen in their rental home. 
With this back door open, the deputies realized there was an intruder in the home. And when they went upstairs, they found a 19-year-old sound asleep. Matt finds this dude laying in a bed in our house. Dude uh, broke into the house in the middle of the night. This silly guy found the one Airbnb in all of downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin, loaded with cops. He woke up in handcuffs. But Deputy Charles Pistola says lucky for him, they were cops. But what if that dude stumbled into a bed with a kid? or my wife. I mean, that could have been a different morning, right? So wrong place, wrong time, lucky place, lucky time that there's dudes that actually know how to handle that. What did he say? Did he know where he was? He had no idea where he was. He had no idea where he thought he was, and he didn't know where he came from. No, this is the first for that. I've woken up in random places. He's being taken away, though. Why did you make this into a TikTok video? I I try to make everything a TikTok video. Part of uh, what I do in our community is put myself out in front of people to be a real person. Cops have a hard time right now. And when they can see that we're still having fun and we're still real people and we're good, um, it's a good thing. The so TikTok really video nice. seen now by tens of thousands. It's now just it's one of many of these guys Let's make learn. all the show a different side of the badge. You made a mistake. It's okay. Yeah. We're going to get over it. And we, at the end of the day, we can smile about it. Crime doesn't stop. And Milwaukee needs our help. We got you, Milwaukee. Hungry for something hot and juicy? Maybe. Bread it by hand? Sounds steamy. Nestled between two toasted buns? Toasty. The new hand-breaded chicken sandwich from Hardee's. Feed your happy. Lake of the Torches Resort Casino. You can count on us for all the hottest slots inside. Sun-dappled water outside. Enjoyment comes naturally here with abundant homestyle foods, the most exciting promotions, and the new Lake Club that rewards you for playing. At Lake of the Torches Resort Casino, expect the best of everything every time you visit. Winning's more fun at the lake. Marshfield Children's providers are experts in the care of rock stars, astronauts, inventors, and reinventors. Acrobats, award-winning chefs, and social media stars. Kids are exceptional. We provide kid-worthy care for every kind of kid. Marshfield Children's. Managing type 2 diabetes? You're on it. You may think you're doing all you can to manage type 2 diabetes and heart disease, but could your medication do more to lower your heart risk? Jardians can reduce the risk of cardiovascular death for adults who also have known heart disease, so it could help save your life from a heart attack or stroke. And Jardians lowers A1C. Jardians can cause serious side effects, including dehydration, genital yeast or urinary tract infections, and sudden kidney problems. Ketoacidosis is a serious side effect that may be fatal. A rare but life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Jardians and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this bacterial infection, ketoacidosis, or an allergic reaction. And don't take it if you're on dialysis or have severe kidney problems. Taking Jardians with a sulfonuria or insulin may cause low blood sugar. Lower A1C and lower risk of a fatal heart attack? On it with Jardians. We're committed to making Jardians available and affordable. With our savings card, eligible patients pay as little as $10. You like it made from scratch? We know you do. How about hot and hand-breaded? That looks crispy. First thing in the morning. Not your grandpa's biscuit. The new hand-breaded chicken biscuit from Hardee's. Feed your happy. WPS is reporting 376 without power as of 10 minutes ago. Nice job, WPS. Uh, these are all non-severe right now. The trick is to keep this one right there non-severe as it surges south across parts of Lincoln County into Marathon County. Merrill's getting pounded right now. Anago, you're up next with this one. You could see some penny-sized hail with that. Also some gusty winds. But overall, these are coming down now in intensity. They're about to kind of leave the area shortly, and we're in a drying out 
trend tonight into tomorrow. And then we're going to crank up the heat. Are you ready for this? Tomorrow, not too bad. 75, Wednesday, 74, almost near 80 Thursday. And then firmly in the 80s, Friday through Monday. And incredibly humid over the weekend as well. Hot, humid, and dry forecast, Jeff. All right, thanks, Jeff. Thank you for joining us on Newswatch 12 at 6. Wheel of Fortune is next. We'll see you back here at 10 with more.